any day off, any layoff, is complete with a solid win against Flores. Well, our main event still to come, the vacant IBA middleweight championship, Dana Rosenblatt, against terrible Terry Norris, former world champion Terry Norris. Dana Rosenblatt with 153 rounds as a professional. Norris with 148 title rounds. A big step up in class for Dynamite Dana Rosenblatt. Terry Norris, 47-7 and seven with 31 knockouts. The longest layoff of his career. He lost his junior middleweight championship on December the 6th of 1997. For a closer look at Terry Norris, Al Bernstein has a view. Terry Norris is a four-time world champion who had held the WBC Junior welterweight belt for the better part of 10 years. But on the verge of a huge payday with Oscar De La Hoya, his world came apart. In December of 97, he stepped into the ring with Keith Mullins, who had given Raul Marquez a run for his money the previous September. Norris was having his way, boxing Mullins from the outside and winning rounds. But come the mid-rounds, Norris decided to change his attack, and he moved inside. I still think this fight, fighting on, on the inside, is a big mistake. Yeah. That's his game, man. I should just stick with my game plan, my game plan, and just keep boxing, keep moving. But um, instead, I got stupid, and I went in and tried to blow with him, and he caught me some devastating punches. After a while, look, he just rocked back and caught me with a good right hand. In the eighth round, Norris found himself on the canvas with thoughts of his title and a payday versus Oscar De La Hoya slipping away. Although he survived the round, Mullings attacked like a shark, and smelling blood in the water, he finished Norris in the top of the ninth round. I was devastating this round. I lost that. It shouldn't have happened. Um, I made a big mistake and he called me with this shot and knocked me out. But um, I was on the road uh, to big, big, huge pays and I screwed it up. Dana Rosenblatt was racing for the top of the middleweight division. He had a perfect record of 28-0 and was fresh off a victory over Howard Davis where he claimed the WBU middleweight belt. With thoughts of greatness in mind, he stepped in against Vinny Pazienza in August of 96 where a win over the former champ would surely put him in the thick of world title contention. Rosenblatt was well in control before lightning struck seemingly out of nowhere. Rosenblatt was down and his vision of the future became blurry. I really just kind of got a little bit too excited. I wanted to win a little bit too badly and sometimes when you, when you want something too badly, um, yeah, you, you, you serve to do things that um, kind of make you self-destruct. The wounded Rosenblatt was unbelievably allowed to continue. Pazienza unleashed a barrage on the young contender and crushed his world title dream. A 10-round decision over the respected veteran Glenwood Brown would get Rosenblatt back on track. But a badly broken hand would derail him for yet another 14 months. Tonight they meet, each made stronger by their past, with the quality of their futures predicated on the outcome of tonight's bout. A win over him will put me at the top of boxing, I believe, in the middleweight division, and uh, it really put me in line for a, a big fight. But Terry is not finished. Terry and Lady, they, they always so, so quick uh, to count me out. But uh, I like that. That's one for the world champion. And soon we fight. Well, Terry Norris wants another championship. Al Dana Rosenblatt, you mentioned in the piece, the injured right hand. He's still having some hand problems. He is indeed. He's had trouble in his last two fights with the middle knuckle on his left hand. And I'll tell you what, you can't overestimate what a big problem these hand problems have been for Dana Rosenblatt and how much they could affect him in this fight. It has cost him in several fights. Well, he is going against Terry Norris, a former world champion, arguably one of the best boxers in the business in the late 80s in the early 90s. What about this layoff for Norris? We just saw Marquez come back from the same layoff. Is it too much at this age? I'll tell you what, to have this layoff after such a tough fight is going to be difficult for Norris. Now, you said we saw Marquez come back very well in box, so let's talk about
about the early rounds. The early rounds are vital for Terry Norris. Can he box? Can he get a rhythm? If I'm Dana Rosenblatt, even though a lefty usually wants to stay on the outside as he did against Pazienza and try and use that lefty stance, Rosenblatt's a very good inside fighter. If I'm Dana Rosenblatt, I walk right to Terry Norris from the get-go, get inside, work the body and say, hey, you haven't fought in 292 days, you're 31, I think maybe you're shot, I'm going to take it right to you. Well, 17 of Rosenblatt's 23 knockouts have come early in the fight. A lot of betting on this in Las Vegas. Norris, just a 9-5 to five favorite. Yeah, but money came in on him toward the end, and so a lot of people think that Terry Norris maybe has too much experience for Dana Rosenblatt. Either way, I just think this is an excellent matchup. All right, we are set for tonight's main event. To the ring we go, and Mark Biro. Ladies and gentlemen, from the wonder of the Connecticut Woods, Foxwoods Resort Casino, Top Rank Incorporated, in association with Budweiser, the undisputed, undefeated king of beers, this Bud's for you presents the Deuce main event of the evening, 12 rounds for the vacant IBA middleweight championship of the world. IBA president in attendance, Cy Young great, Dean Chance. Introducing now the principals first in the red corner to my left, wearing the red trunks, white trim, weighing in at 156 pounds. He hails from San Diego, California, with a professional record of 47 victories, 7 defeats, 31 wins coming by way of knockout, a three-time WBC Super Welterweight Champion of the World, Terry Norris. His opponent in the blue corner, wearing the white trunks with the blue trim, weighing in at 158 pounds, he hails from Mount IBA middleweight championship. And let's take a look at the unified rules for tonight's main event. There will be a 10-point must system. No free knockdown rule. No standing eight. Only the referee can stop the bout. Fighter cannot be saved the bell in any round. If there's an accidental headbutt, they'll go to the scorecards after four rounds are completed. Prior to that, a technical draw. Partial rounds are not scored, but any point deductions in a partial round will count. Dana Rosenblatt more of a natural middleweight, Al, 158 pounds at the weigh-in. He's about 172 pounds tonight in the ring. And they are banking on that as being the difference in this fight. Hey, I'll tell you what, it's been a long time since I've sat here and looked at a fight and said to myself, I just don't know. You can make a case for either man here, and a good case. And we've had lots of even fights, certainly, on our network, but you look at this and uh, you can go back and forth five or six times on it. North with eight first-round knockouts, 23 of his 31 rock knockouts in the first four rounds. Rosenblatt with seven, 17 of his 23 knockouts have come within the first three, so both men will get to it. Rosenblatt. Began his career kickboxing in the New England area, also martial arts. Very successful with that, and that's trying to become the champion in boxing. Now, Rosenblatt is staying more on the outside early on in this match. I think he's kind of working his way, and when he does get on the inside, he is working. <laughs> Norris, a little wide with his punches early in this bout. Remember the long layup. He's gotten hit with some pretty good straight left hands. And also let's remember, and we haven't talked that much about it, Terry Norris having to face the left stance. So that adds yet another wrinkle. Look at how wide those right hands are for Terry Norris. Yes, he is. And early on already, Rosenblatt has landed 9 of 13 jabs in the first minute of the bout. So it tells you that that punch is starting to work. Look at it. Oh, he is getting that punch into a force. And the straight leg from the 
coming behind it very soon, I assure you. So Dan Rosenblatt preparing for the best of Terry Norris. His trainer, Joe Lake, said that we are preparing for the Norris that beat Ray Leonard. I don't know if that same Norris exists anymore. I have never seen Terry Norris throw his right hand in the odd fashion he's throwing it. I don't know if that's by design or what. Terry looks intent to get a knockout. He looks like he feels like his power. Well, you know, they, they saw Pazienza knock Rosenblatt out basically with one punch because after that first knockdown, Dana was out of it. Because Pazienza has become a very legitimate 168 pounds. Oh, big right hook. Kurt Norris, he's hurt. He got whacked on the inside. Terry Norris doesn't look good in this first round, I gotta tell you. Straight left hand from Rosenblatt. Very good. I don't even like the way Norris is throwing his punches. He's really good. He's swinging that right hand from way outside. Rosenblatt from Malden, Massachusetts. Catholic High School in 1990. A personable young man. And there's the bell to end round number one. A good round one. To Dana Rosenblatt, to Terry Norris's corner we go. Deep, deep, deep. Slow, deep. Okay, Terry. Beautiful job, man. Only one thing, Terry. You should keep your left hand to cover up what you want with your cross right. Your cross right go to where? To where? To the chest. You know what? Your cross right. Your, your, your cross right to the chest. Okay? Cross right to the chest. Remember, don't waste in time, man. Okay? Don't waste in time, Terry. Come on, man. Ismael Salas. Come on, man. Joe Lake. Danny Rosenberg. Well, Joe Lake said that they felt Norris was less mobile. He was a great puncher, he's an okay puncher now, and now he's going to stand there and trade because of all the mileage on his legs, and they were concerned in Rosenblatt camp about Norris using a lot of tricks and low blows and fouls and back-fisted jabs. Look at that first round. I mean, that's a bad first round for Norris, landing only three punches. Rosenblatt had 19 jabs in that, in that round. Only one jab landed by Norris. Now, normally against the left, you're not going to land that many jabs. He's smoking and have his hands full of this. Wow. Oh, she's losing blood for holding. Yeah. Can't blame Norris. He was trying to punch his way out of it. Rosenblatt has set the call. Nice right hook. Rosenblatt set the tempo by landing his jab. He is a bigger, stronger man on the inside, Rosenblatt. If he can stay there, he's actually less likely to get hurt in hit. But then, of course, you think to yourself, I'm a lefty. I want to use that lefty stance when I get it. So, six of one half dozen of another. Very nice. The brother of Orlando Norris. You want a break? I don't know what Smoke is warning uh, Norris about. Maybe he's telling him that you can take some time. That's yeah. what he's saying. Huh? Steve, one of the best referees in the business. Here in this part of the country, along with Tony Orlando, another great ref. And yeah. Terry Norris, a veteran, will right, take as much time. Keep it clean now. Come on. See some of the young boxers after they given time to rest. We like to say, oh, I'm ready to go and charge right back in. No, I can take some time. We are seeing the Dana Rosenblatt better quick movements. He's hurting Terry Norris. There is Norris trying to duck away. Norris with a right hand now. Oh, I'll tell you what. The more it becomes a brawl, though, the more we wonder, could he hurt Rosenblatt like Pazienza did with the other hand? Oh, it's, it's getting to be fun. It's still Norris who's delivering, delivering his right hands in a very awkward manner. Yeah, he really is. Yeah, throwing it like... Uh, the, and Ismael Salas kept calling it a cross right. That's the way he's throwing it. That may be by design, though I have no idea why they throw it. I guess they think against the left, you can land the punch that way, but you lose, you diminish the power. You know, Rosenblatt, he thought he had Terry Norris. He thought he 
the older than the strong then Norris landed a couple of big shots and Rosenblatt realized, hey, this guy can still punch a little bit. So it's shaping up to be quite an interesting fight. Some blood from the nose of Terry Norris. We come to the end of round number two on ESPN. Who's brought in that fight? Rosenblatt on the inside working, landing that straight left hand. That was his best punch of the round, and it did stun Terry Norris. But the only turn around, Norris was able to get a couple good shots in. You know, Rosenblatt only threw 14 jabs in that last round. He landed nine, but he's underusing that weapon a little bit now. Take a look at the punch numbers in round number two. Wow, Rosenblatt getting much the better of it. But Norris did stun Rosenblatt. He threw a good overhand right. That's the punch you know, Rosenblatt could win this bout by Javid. He really could. What he was doing against Pazienza, except he got careless. He's, look how Rosenblatt's keeping his left hand very high. You know that he and Joe Lake went to school on that and have been going to school on that since the Pazienza fight. I don't think Rosenblatt can miss with that jab when he throws it.
See that Russian bat keeping his left hand up? He does not want to get hit with another overhand right like he did by Pazienza and like he did earlier here by Terry Norris. Also, uh, a win for Norris over a lefty was Quincy Taylor. He beat him. So, yes, Pat wins over the lefties he's fought, but Pat hasn't fought that many. A minute to go in round four. Not a man has been down. Norris staggered near the end of round number three. This fight going very much the way Rosenblatt would like it to go, I think. Good left hand from Rosenblatt. Norris is complaining about a headbutt. Instead, he eats a left hand. He drove Norris back with those guys. Is this the end of the for Terry Norris? I'm not sure. He's complaining about getting thumbed or butted, I believe. Oh, good left hand by Norris. Come to the end of round number four. Norris and Rosenblatt on ESPN 2 Friday Night Fights. To Foxwoods Casino, Bob Pomp along with Al Bernstein, ESPN 2's Friday Night Fights, round five underway between Dana Rosenblatt and Terry Norris for the vacant IBA middleweight championship. Great left from Rosenblatt, punch numbers in four, Al. Well, Rosenblatt again dominating in terms of overall numbers. When it gets messy like that, Rosenblatt tends to sometimes get hit with some looping punches by Norris, and he doesn't keep his composure as well as he might, but it also hurts Norris because Norris leaves himself open for those counter shots. His trainer Joe Lake said, just use your jab and move away. Use your jab and move away. Well, they're very conscious of not having another debacle like the Pazienza fight. Like, about the fact that Norris has fought 148 championship rounds, Rosenblatt has fought, fought a total of 153. So Terry Norris has been around the block and then some. More championship rounds fought than Rosenblatt has, almost more than Rosenblatt has fought total rounds. Yeah, 148 championship rounds for Norris, and I mean big time championship fights. Rosenblatt with 153 rounds as a pro, but throw so that all out the window. Rosenblatt is younger and looks to be a little stronger right now. And he's a lefty. And all those rounds may be coming back to haunt Norris. Exactly right. <laughs> and we had a long amateur career as well. You know, Rosenblatt giving just a little movement is enough. When Dana Rosenblatt is a stationary target, which he became in the Pazienza fight at a certain point, you can get him with those overhand rights, but if he just gives you a little side to side and all, a little is all you need, you're maybe not going to hit him with those shots. But Joe Lake told him, if you, if you want jab, then get out of there. It's okay. Here's a little nip on the forehead of Rosenblatt to flash your hands. Now, Terry Norris, from his standpoint, has a real conundrum here because he can't, he's not doing good work on the inside. On the outside, the lefty stance is bothering him. So he can't find a comfort zone where he can fight. Let him out of there, Johnny. Let him out. Let him out. Step. Step. Get some holding. These former steps in. Come to the end of round five. Again, Dana Rosenblatt outboxing Terry Norris. Welcome back to Foxwoods. Enthusiastic crowd on hand as we begin round number six. At stake, the IBA middleweight championship, the vacant title. Dana Rosenblatt and Terry Norris battling for it. Bob Popper along with Al Bernstein. And this bout has been controlled by Dana Rosenblatt, the 26-year-old from Malden, Massachusetts. Away, away. 
punch number is through five rounds. Huge edge for Rosenblatt. They're throwing approximately the same number, but he's landing at 60%. A lot of that has to do with the jabs. He's also landing a lot of power punches as well. Terry Norris having the classic problem of a righty versus lefty. They are often not very accurate in the number of punches they throw because it's tough. So what does Norris need to do, Al? Well, Terry Norris, I think, they pin their hopes on him landing that kind of funny-looking right hand. They keep calling it the cross right. He hasn't thrown any left hook against Dana Rosenblatt. Rosenblatt pushing his head down. You know, the veteran tricks have been done by Rosenblatt. The holding, the pushing the head down. And he looks more the veteran than Norris. I think Terry Norris should get to throw in those double hooks, and then the right hand will be there. But he hasn't done it. Rosenblatt very successful with his jab in between the rounds. Is trainer Joe makes it. You know, you can even use that straight left, just fire it like a dart, and it will hit home. Rosenblatt is spinning Norris around. The preparation Rosenblatt has had for this fight, you can see, is excellent. He's still moving from side to side, just enough. He's spinning Norris. He's holding on the inside. He's doing all these things to disrupt Norris's rhythm and give himself the most advantage. Tell you what, Terry Norris here in a tough fight coming back. He's what, 16 former world champions. Good right hand, left hook by Norris. Is yeah. Rosenblatt hurt? It all started with a wild miss by Rosenblatt. Terry Norris has never ducked anyone in his whole career, and that's why coming in against a tough guy like Rosenblatt, right back from his loss to Mullins is typical of him. His first title shot was against Julian Jackson. Won the title against John the Beast Mugabe. Pummeled Sugar Ray Leonard. Beat up Donald Curry. Fought Melvin Taylor, Maurice Blocker. Simon Brown twice. It's a who's who of the welterweight and junior middleweight division. As you go Some of those guys, oh, oh. that hurt him. I don't think that was low either. I think that one was legal. They both landed low punches, mostly Rosenberg. That was right to midsection. Good long hand by Norris. Rosenblatt gets in trouble and he throws right hooks. Well, the end of round six signifies the midway point of the bout. Back after this timeout. Rosenblatt throwing that good straight left hand. Well, you know that was right on the borderline. Could have been, could have been uh, legal or low. Rosenblatt comes right out firing. Start round number seven. Punches in round number six. Rosenblatt again with the edge. They threw exactly the same number, but Rosenblatt much more accurate. Step, 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 step. step. There have been no knockdowns. Norris has been staggered several times. He has hit Rosenblatt with some good, clean shots, but Rosenblatt really has not budged. And you know, since the Pazienza fight, everybody thought maybe Rosenblatt's chin is suspect or if he gets hit by a, a quality puncher. Everybody has held their breath, but those shots that Norris hit him with have not really made a big impact. Al scorecard through six. I have Rosenblatt, and the punch numbers, of course, would corroborate that. Good left to the body again by Rosenblatt, and that one was definitely legal. I think if I was a Rosenblatt fan or part of his team, I think my biggest concern wouldn't be the chin as opposed to the hands. He had the broken right hand after the Glenwood Brown fight. He's been bothered by sore middle knuckle on his left hand. That could be even more damaging than maybe a suspect chin. Yeah, and that's bothered him in fights. Now, in his last fight against Arthur Allen, he won in 10, but toward the end of that fight, right near the end, Rosenblatt was really rocked with the right hand. And I mean, there looked like there was serious danger he could lose that fight. Good body work again. Dana Rosenblatt's big problem is when he throws the right hook. That's when Terry Norris counters him. Terry really, oh, boy, he rocked with that. Yeah, Norris is hurt. Rosenblatt moving in for the kill. One minute to go in round seven. He cannot be saved by the bell in any round. Norris holding on. Well, the jab is what hurt Terry Norris there. Terry Norris has to find a way to land a big power punch. It's not going to be that, that clubbing right hand. It's got no power in it. 
Well, what's the punch? It's the left hook. There, that's what he needs to do. Double left hook. That's the first time he's done it in seven rounds. I know the one thing about Norris that I find alarming is he seems constantly off balance. He is, and, and he's, that's part of his problem. He just threw a beautiful double left hook. And the punch that Danny Rosenblatt is accepting from the other the overhand right is the left hook over Rosenblatt's own right hook. And, and Norris landed it around earlier, but didn't come back to it. Right there, Norris is in position to throw it. Quick, don't punch, don't punch. Come to the end of round seven. Schedule for 12, Terry Norris and Dan Rosenblatt on the deep. TSN. Dana Rosenblatt getting the job done with that strong jab that knocked him off balance. Also, he pushed him a little. But here's what Terry Norris could do. Look at this excellent double left hook. This is the way you fight a lefty. Hasn't done it. Very little in this round. Round number eight underway. Dana Rosenblatt and Terry Norris scheduled for 12 to make an IBA. Middleweight championship. Punch numbers in round seven. Again, in favor of Rosenblatt. By a large margin as far as connect percentage. His connect percentage in this whole fight, and I'll be curious to see it. We might be able to find that out for the next round. Rosenblatt's connect percentage for the whole fight has got to be over 50, well over 50 percent. Late power. Rosenblatt has two knockouts after the seventh round. Norris with five. There's two eighth round knockouts, two ninth round knockouts against David Gonzalez and Carl Daniels, and a tenth round knockout against Nick Rupert in 1997. You know, just a moment ago, Terry Ter Norris threw the first really good straight right hand he's thrown out. Rosenblatt ducked it, but it was a good punch. How about Steve Smolder? Rosenblatt complaining that Norris spun him and then hit him, and Steve Smolder said, hey, you're doing stuff too, just right. box. Exactly right. Both men have, have used veteran tricks, some slightly outside the bounds of the rule. Terry Norris threw a good straight right hand a moment ago, as I said. He is not throwing that punch straight, and that's why he's not landing. Exciting night of boxing. Raul Marquez, the unanimous decision against Shabata Flores. You see a Riker stopping Marcelo Acuna in round five. Eric Morel stops Rodolfo Blanco in a big test. At 214 of round number six. And Zahir Rahim, a fifth round stoppage of Sean Powell in an entertaining affair. <laughs> He hasn't thrown the straight left that much in this bottle that Joe Lake has called for, but that was a beauty. Well, a complete performance so far from Rosenblatt and an uneven one from Terry Norris. Norris had good sparring with Raul Marquez, Daniel Santos, Sugar Ray Collins, David Sample, and uh, Santos and Sample very quick-handed, so he faced... Pretty good lefty sparring. There were some rumors that uh, some of the sparring partners were having their way with Norris. Based upon what we've seen tonight, I can understand that. Oh, nice spare left hand. Norris shakes his head no, but those punches are still scoring points. The amazing thing is the balance of Terry Norris just seems so off. Turn to Fox Woods after this time out on ESPN 2, Friday Night Fights. We're just from Boston, Michael Katz from the New York Daily News to the team of boxing writers of the sport so well on hand. Of course, a lot in this area to see Lennox Lewis tomorrow night, and they have seen some good action tonight. Dana Rosenblatt and Terry Norris for the IBA Middleweight Championship. Round number nine in the way. And at least we feel that if we look at the punch numbers to eight, that Rosenblatt is dominating this fight. And look at the percentage Rosenblatt has landed. 63% landed. When you're up around 63%, you're doing a lot right. And I hate to say it, your opponent sometimes is doing a lot wrong. Terry Norris' defense has not been stellar in this fight because Terry, there was a time when I absolutely lobbied that he was the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world. Things have eroded a little bit in the last couple of years, last year or so especially. Oh, look at the jab by Rosenberg. Yeah, I think between 1990 and his loss in 93 to Simon Brown, he was arguably the best boxer in the world. 
and had great moments after that as well, but uh, he has had some wars. And because of all those fights, he's really not a young 31. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing evidence of some of that here tonight. What shocks me is the wide punching. That frequently is what goes in the technique. The balance, too. It just seems to always be leaning the wrong way. And Rosenblatt just seems to have a stronger pace. I'm not sure fighting a lefty in your first fight back for that loss to Mullings was a good idea. He struggled with the lefty stance of Dana Rosenblatt. Well, this is a 12-round bat. They can have the eight title at stake, so... Now, Lars does have some time to change his fortunes, but he'd need a big punch to do. And in this round, I, was, I would give this round to Terry North. Even though he hasn't won it decisively, he's been... Setting the pace a little bit. Had some good luck on the inside. Yeah, he hooks to the body and goes to the head. I don't know that it's a good change in the uh, tide in this fight, but it's a round I would give to Norris. Now, that's a mistake by Rosenblatt, that lead-off right hook. That's when he can get himself into some trouble. The right hook gets him under the at some point from him. Steve Smoger giving him a stern warning, and there's the bell to end the round, round number nine. Some words between the two as they head back to their corner. Well, we invite you to join us on Sunday at 12.40 p.m. Eastern for the Martinsville Speedway in Martinsville, Virginia. The NASCAR Winston Cup NAPA 500. The defending champion is Jeff Burton. Ernie Irvin has won the poll. Ricky Rudd has played second. And Jeff Gordon third. Gordon leads the standings in the series. Winston Cup NAPA 500. Sunday at 12.40 on ESPN. Your worldwide leader in sports. And a Rosenblatt with his trainer, Julie. Go on, go on. Don't lose your balance. Two well fighters. He's going to be desperate. Two well fighters. We're going to be desperate. Good point. He's getting handed. He's got a lane. He's got a lane. He's got a front. Still late telling Dana Rosenblatt it's a three-round fight. Not much in the corner of Terry Norris. Good left hand from Rosenblatt. And followed it with the right hook. Much is in round nine. And we said Norris, we thought one that for how about Rosenblatt only throwing 27 punches, landing at 41 percent, but only 27. That really was taking the round off. Oh, he got hit with a big hook from Dana Rosenblatt. Much in the late hour, Norris has that one knockout after nine rounds. January of 1997, starching Nick Rupert. I mentioned how Arthur Allen hurt Rosenblatt late in the fight. Terry Norris, what did he just hurt him with? A left hook. Why is he Terry Norris throwing more left hooks? I don't know why. He looked like there was a straight right. That wasn't thrown like the rights he's thrown. All of a sudden, we're seeing a different Terry Norris. He's doing a couple of things differently. They're, they're subtle, but they're making a difference. Terry Norris did not have a sound game plan for this fight. I'm not sure what it was, but it didn't include double left hooks. It didn't include straight right hands. And I don't know how on earth you could beat a lefty if you're not going to do that. You're not going to beat him with your jab. You're not going to beat him with those wild right hands. Rosenblatt again, headlock on Norris. He may be buying time. Dana Rosenblatt may be tired. Only 27 punches thrown in the last round. Not too many in this round. He's not doing too much. Rosenblatt has only been past round 10 once in his career. I think he's tired right now. Yeah, could it have been an effect with Norman Norris Sr. being taken to the hospital yesterday? Could that have maybe hurt Terry Norris' preparation and game plan? I, I don't know. I don't think so. Because this looks to me like they were thinking of doing these things coming in. It's possible. <laughs> Rosenblatt has abandoned his jab, letting Norris walk right in. 
getting in ugly exchanges with Terry. But I don't know if Terry wins all these rounds if that still wins him the fight. Right now, Dana Rosenblatt looks like he's in a prevent defense. Yeah. And there's two more rounds to go. And he thought Norris won the last round. So if Norris could win all these last three rounds and would have won the last one. And now Dana Rosenblatt in danger of maybe having points taken away. This one is not over yet, despite the dominance that Rosenblatt has had in this fight. Yeah, he's doing a lot of clutching and grabbing. And he's missing with the jab. The guy who's being aggressive is Terry Norris. Left hand from Rosenblatt knows the bell to end round 10, but another good round for Terry Norris. Well, we invite you to join us on Saturday. College Game Day kicks off our coverage on ESPN at 11 a.m. Then join us for Northwestern versus number 14, Wisconsin at noon Eastern. For Pittsburgh and Virginia Tech tomorrow on ESPN. And on ESPN 2 at 6 p.m. Eastern, number 22, Alabama takes on the Razorbacks of Arkansas. And the Rambling Rack of Georgia Tech take on the Tar Heels of North Carolina. Hey, he now! Hands up, hands up, man. Okay? Come on, Terry. Check it out! Oh, Steve Morrison. 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 Street. Fine job. They cover college football very well. There's Dana Rosenblatt. Beginning round number 11, and maybe he was conserving some energy, but his last two rounds have been flat. Can Dana Rosenblatt change his fortune? He's lost a couple of rounds in a row. The, the problem isn't that he lost the round, it's the way he did it. Throwing very few punches and looking for all the world like he was a tired fighter. Oh, nice right hook. Well, that got Terry Norris's attention in a big way and Terry's holding on. That was a quick short right hook by Rosenblatt. Was Norris hurt? Maybe. Rosenblatt staggered Norris several times earlier in the bout. Not a man has been down. Norris' best two rounds, in fact, the only two rounds that you and I have given Norris were the last two. His left hand came out. A lot of holding it up. And it's been initiated by both men, but more recently, I think, more from Rosenberg. The jab nowhere to be found by Daniel Rosenberg. The weapon that so dominated the early part of this fight. Dana has never been, uh, well, he's been a 12 rank one time, but uh, here he is in the 11th round, only for the second time in his career. Oh, left hand by Norris. And Rosenblatt again holding on, and he's trying to hold on. Norris said, stay away. Dana Rosenblatt's tired, and his confidence is wavering right now, I believe. Not a knockdown, it's a slip or throw, but it's Rosenblatt's holding now that is causing a lot of this. Oh, yeah. He really can make a point that someone has to be deducted. It's not Norris here. Dana Rosenblatt is very tired. He looks shaky right now. And if Terry Norris does have something left, he's in this fight. At least if he can score a knockdown or a knockout, certainly. And Dana Rosenblatt looks really tired. Yeah. Wow, all of a sudden he hit the wall, didn't he? Man, he is just walking. This him. reminds me of Hearns Barkley when Tommy Hearns couldn't avoid holding. Well, Steve Smoger gave him another warning. Good combination from Norris, but he gave him a stern warning earlier. Rosenblatt's out. He has no, he has nothing left in terms of stamina. Well, let's see if Terry Norris has anything left. Wow. You can, you can make the case if Rosenblatt could stay on his feet or win a decision, which is probably true, but I don't know if he can stay on his feet. Big round for Norris. And there's the bell to end round 11. A jab by Rosenblatt at the end. Man, he just has hit the wall here. Take a deep breath. Take a deep 
box with him. He's just coming in. Keep your hands up high and box now. Off the jab, off the jab and move. He ain't got enough to fall in too much. Hit him with the jab. Hit him with the jab. Hit him with the... And don't reach early. Don't let him take it away from you. I'm going to make people come. You're going to make me take it from you. You cannot hold. You cannot hold. Come on, baby. You can do what you can do. You're walking back. Keep your hands up and don't lean in. Don't lean in. Use your legs. You got the legs, he don't. Right with the speed, with power, Terry. Come on, you are champion, man. Stay low, okay? You okay. got to stay low. Well, I'll tell you what, Joe Lake telling uh, Rosenblatt, you've got the legs, he doesn't. Not right now. Earlier, yes. Not right now. Well, they touch gloves to begin round 12, and here comes Terry Norris. He gave away, at least according to our eyes, the first eight rounds of the bout. We think he needs a knockout to win. Rosenblatt in the survival mode. Punches in round 11. Now, see, it wasn't that Norris had such a great round, but Rosenblatt did so little. And then Rosenblatt did a lot of holding in the round. And he's holding now. I'll see one more episode and the point can be taken away. But you know what? That is that is the third warning. And there's my scoring. I've got Rosenblatt at 107 to 102. So I think a knockout is necessary by North. But what if a couple of those rounds were scored differently right. than the judges? And if they could have been. And they could have been. It's possible. And, and, and Rosenblatt's close to maybe getting a two-point round against him if he gets a point he got. Dana, Dana, as he eats another combination. And he's cut out a little bit under the right eye. More, more, more important than that, Norris is starting to land things. There's a good jab from Rosenblatt. Maybe Rosenblatt isn't ready yet for prime time. Well, he's certainly training. In terms of training, he may need more. He may need to work harder because he hit the wall in the ninth round. Now, if you're tenth for sure. If you're Norris, you have to be saying to Steve Smoger, exactly when are you going to take a penalty where you have given Rosenblatt three stern warnings about holding. And this is also an indication, I have to say, that Terry Norris doesn't have a lot left right. himself. Right. And that maybe this shows him where his skill level is at right now. Against the fighter this fighter, he should be making more things happen, even with the hold. Well, the Terry Norris from a few years ago would have taken Rosenblatt out. But then again, the Terry Norris from a few years ago might not be this far behind. No, absolutely. <laughs> definitely. here toward the end and Rosenblatt and his mission is to get through the next 51 seconds on his feet. Even a knockdown he might still win this fight but you never know. There's Norris letting his hands go but it all seems too little too late. Rosenblatt trying to use that jab to work so well for him already. It's a countdown for Dana Rosenblatt. Can he make it without something bad happening to him? Rosenblatt holds on again. He won't let go. And Steve Smoger has to take a point at some point. Well, it probably won't happen now. Because you're right, if those earlier rounds are scored a bit differently, that point could mean a whole lot. It looks like Rosenblatt will make the bow. He does. Got off to a great start, but struggled to the end. We will find out with the judges done when we return to Foxwoods after this timeout. On ESPN 2, Friday Night Fights. Welcome back to Foxwoods. Dana Rosenblatt hanging on down the stretch against veteran Terry Norris for the vacant IBA Middleweight Championship. Bob Papa along with Al Bernstein. We'll take a look at some final punch numbers in this fight between Dana Rosenblatt and Terry Norris. It was a very strong start for Rosenblatt. You see he landed at 58%. Through the first eight rounds he was landing at over 60%, but he faded in the final four rounds, especially the last three where he was inactive, but Norris could not finish him off, and that could be the key tonight. We are set for the decision. Here is Mark Biro. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a unanimous decision. Judge Harold Letterman scores it 115-113. Judge Frank Garza scores it 
115-113. And Judge Gary Merritt scores it 116-112 to the winner by unanimous decision and IBA middleweight champion of the world, Dana Rosenblatt. Wins the unanimous decision. Al Bernstein and I had it 116-112. Rosenblatt won the first eight rounds for the most part in very convincing fashion. It would be hard to argue really any of those rounds in Norris's favor. And Terry Norris just could not finish Rosenblatt out at the end when Rosenblatt was literally out on his feet. Al Bernstein has made his way into the ring and hopefully we'll get a chance to hear from both Terry Norris and Dana Rosenblatt. Very good evening tonight. Raul Marquez, unanimous decision against Shabata Flores. Lucia Riker stopped Marcelo Acuna. Eric Morel stopped Rodolfo Blanco and Zahir Rahim stopped Sean Powell. Let's send it up to Al Bernstein with Dana Rosenblatt. All right, I'm here with Dana Rosenblatt and Joe Lake. Dana, this was two different fights. You were excellent, I mean really excellent, through the first eight and a half rounds. What happened? Did you get tired? Uh, Terry's a, a, a really seasoned veteran, and I really have to give it to him. Uh, he's, a, he's a true champion, and he still had a lot left in his show tonight. Uh, he had hot, and he wanted to come on, and he felt years of boxing slipping away from him and at the end and I feel like he really turned it on and it was like a last stand for him so it was I think it was more him than it was myself was it I have to say honestly you, you, st you threw a lot less punches though the last three or four rounds was that because of him or it was um was you, you performed Al brilliantly for eight rounds thank you Al um I was talking with Ron Borges uh, earlier on uh, last week, mm -hmm. and you know we were talking about the Pazienza fight, and you know I felt as though I did too much. Oh, you know, okay. I was doing too much, and um, I didn't have to do that much. And I wanted to slow it down in the later rounds, be very conservative, just throw enough to land effectively, and that was it. And that that was basically that was it. Now the one thing your jab early in this fight was spectacular. In addition to the inside fighting, oh, did you know you were going to be able to land that jab? I had an idea I was going to be able to hit him with the jab. Uh, you know, he kind of leans in and he's heavy on the front foot. Um, you know, and for that reason, I thought I could land my jab effectively. Um, if, if I could just say one quick thing, uh, my father and Joe Lake were there with me from the, from way back from the yep. beginning, from where this all started, and especially since the broken hand, the comeback. It's been a long trail back, especially after passing hands of fight, a fight that I really felt that I should have won. Uh, breaking my hand in the first round with Glenwood Brown, it was a long way back. I'm, I'm two years away from that point, and my, my father and, and Joe Lake, two guys, my wife, my mother, I love you, Ma, I'll be home tomorrow, uh, I'm fine. And, you know, these two guys were in the gym with me. They were there with me the whole way. I love you, Dad. <laughs> All right. Let me ask Joe Lake, your trainer, that's a great thought. You know what, I thought he was as well prepared as a fighter could be especially strategy in terms of strategy for this fight. Thanks, Al. You know, we, we worked hard in the gym, and, you know, Terry's a great fighter. I wasn't taking anything away from Terry Norris, a tremendous world champion, and we knew we were in for a tough fight, but, hey, look, that's what ESPN wants. They want you to be in real fights. And, uh, <laughs> well, you were in a real, you know, one. real fight. What's next for you now, Dana? Well, we're not sure, you know. We're, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Me and my dad are going to play some golf. <laughs> good answer. That's a good answer. I would. I'm, I'm, I'm not quite sure. We're going to go back to the... Uh, you know, to home, and we're gonna we're gonna map out a strategy. Uh, ultimately, you know, we're looking to fight Oscar when he when he moves his way up. But uh, so is everybody else between 168. And I, I may be the only guy not looking to fight Oscar. You're gonna take care of that guy. Congratulations, good win. Thank you, Al. It was a pleasure to have uh, you calling this fight. Uh, we love you. I enjoyed it. Right. Andy Rosenblatt gets his win, a hard-earned one. Let's go back to Bob Papa. Eric Morrell, a winner tonight. So was Lucia Riker. And Raul Marquez and Dana Rosenblatt, all victorious along with Zahir Rahim. Winners tonight on ESPN 2's Friday Night Fights. Coming up next on the Deuce, the AAA World Series live from Las Vegas. For Al Bernstein and our entire crew, this is Bob Papa saying this has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Max tonight and what we have here basically you haven't heard about this ESPN has purchased the rights to the big fights incorporated library the best collection ever put together